Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to Chapter 18. This is all about regulation of gene expression. So this is Unit 6B. And this first recording is just going to be a little intro. And then we will then move on. Uh, there's a funny joke. All right, this is a cool TED Talk. Uh, and I'm just going to do this few little slides first, okay, because then you guys are going to do a whole goal. So this is just a review picture of one of those crosses that Mendel did with flowers. And so the point of this is to just remind you that you have learned a lot about the genetic reasons for differences in things and also the molecular basis. So different um, genes, right, encode different traits and different alleles can code different versions of those traits. So you have learned a lot about that already. And this next unit is going to continue sort of that conversation about uh, inheritance and why different phenotypes are seen. So we'll get into that here in a second. Um, this is just another picture showing how different alleles can code for different versions of the same phenotype. All right, but now we have situations where things can be genetically identical but look very different. So this is an example of bees, honeybees. Uh, and queen bees, they are genetically identical. So they have the same DNA, they got the same genes. Uh, they're sort of clones of each other, except that obviously they look really differently, different. They look different and they have much different behavior and much different physiology. Um, honey queen bees live a really long time. They lay eggs like crazy. Um, as opposed to the worker bees that are sterile. So this is super um, interesting, in fact, because they're identical in genetic sequence, but they're very, very different in those traits, physiology and appearance and lifestyle and so forth. So that's an interesting situation. Termites are kind of the same way. The queen termite versus a worker termite, genetically identical, very, very different looking they have different phenotypes they have different uh roles in the nest uh and different um you know physiology the queen this is really here just for more of a fun fact uh if you have a termite queen in your house in your wooden house that's a big bummer they live a long time and they lay a lot of eggs they lay one egg every three seconds for 15 years, <laughs> so that's a little bit hard to imagine, but that's a termite queen, and they're genetically identical to the workers in those nests. So very, very interesting about how they can be so different, yet theoretically the same. Okay, so that's the big question, right? How do same genotypes give rise to different phenotypes? And at least for those two uh, insects, the secret is in the food, uh, for the bees, uh, those queen bee larvae are fed this royal jelly. So in this case, they're born identically, they're genetically identical, but the queen uh, babies get fed this special kind of stuff called royal jelly, and it's basically um, super rich in nutrients, uh, and it's made by the... Um, the nurse bees, what are called the nurse bees, and it's fed to those larvae that are going to turn into the queens. And what happens is that it triggers a whole sequence of events that results in a queen turning into a queen, okay, and the worker not turning into a queen because they don't get the royal jelly. And in fact, royal jelly is a kind of a health food uh, trend. I don't know if it's a trend anymore, but people were really into royal jelly for a long time, thinking that for humans, you know, it could sort of bestow all these incredible properties. I think that's been largely debunked. I don't know if people are really eating royal jelly much these days, but I'm sure there are some people. Um, but anyway, this is all about what's called epigenetics, which is part of what we're going to get into in this chapter. And it's how changes in gene expression, in other words, changes in how a gene sequence gets turned into a protein, affect phenotype, and those things are inheritable. So in the case of those bees, you know, royal jelly is turning certain genes on and certain genes off. And the same set of genes turns one larva into a queen and not the workers. So that is very interesting. And then here's just another little analogy about making a meal. You have a recipe book, otherwise known as a cookbook, right? And different 
cells can cook different recipes. So different recipes in that cookbook make different things, correct? Um, and that's kind of analogous to our genes. Um, all of our cells have the same DNA, but in all of our cells, uh, all the same thing doesn't happen. So in other words, um, right, we can have uh, every single cell with the same genetic sequence, but some of our cells develop into blood cells, some develop into skin cells, some develop into bone cells, etc. So uh, the question is, why does that happen, right? Why does that happen if genetically they're the same? Okay, and that's what this is about. It's about regulating the expression of different genes in different cell types. One reason is that our needs change. Okay, this is just a picture of two people going from children to adults. And clearly, you know, their fundamental genetics isn't really changing uh, for the most part, but their bodies are changing. So different things are happening as a person ages. Different genes get turned on, different genes get turned off. And so therefore different proteins get made or not made. All right, um, here's a picture of a pathway. Uh, this is showing some bacterial metabolism, a pathway of a metabolic pathway. Uh, and the idea is that cells are going to make certain proteins um, in response to signals in their environment. So if you look on the left-hand side of this picture, gene 1 produces enzyme 1, gene 2 produces enzyme 2, gene 3 produces enzyme 3, and so forth. And then the proteins or the enzymes going down the right-hand side, uh, this is all part of the tryptophan. Uh, synthesis pathway in bacteria, which we're going to talk, you know, a lot about in the next couple of screencasts. But then in this case, tryptophan gets made and it goes back up. This little negative sign right there acts as an inhibitor. Okay, so depending on what's available in a cell, different proteins, different genes will get turned on, you know, depending on, you know, what's available. Okay, this next slide is a picture you've seen before. This is just a generic chemical pathway that shows the conversion of some molecule A to B, and that reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme, enzyme 1, and then B to C and C to D and so forth. And so in this case, it turns out that D comes back and turns off enzyme 1. That's negative feedback. Okay, this is just an example of a regulatory pathway you know that could be like a you know like a metabolic pathway it's just a generic pathway but this is what we're going to see here with some of these genes and how they get turned on and off so that's what's coming and i believe this leads us to the pogo that you are going to do in class